When the world was told that all they had to do was stay at home, they lost their mind. Some people were struggling just being at home and having to be around their families. While they struggled, sim gamers had a moment, a special moment that was all happening on Isle 2 Great Battles. 447. Oh, it's a thunderbolt. Big fat thunderbolt. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I can see him now. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it was that guy, it was, it was the fucking British. If you want to jump him, jump him, jump him, but don't let him go. I has like a nine kill streak right now. You have to be dead. I'm extending, I'm extending. 117. But then there was silence. We went from having what I would argue one of the most fun periods in sim gaming to a complete dead experience. And the crazy thing is, nothing in particular made IL-2 worse. If anything, things got better. Today we talk about the state of IL-2 Great Battles. What happened? How could the game feel so dead right now when nothing particularly bad happened? If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay. So if you're into that, please subscribe. Sim gamers far and wide came together for the most immersive, the most competitive, and the most active combat flight sim experience, and it was happening on Finnish Virtual Pilots and on Combat Box. If you are a sim gamer and if you were not on there, you simply screwed up and squandered being part of a real high moment. Despite this game engine being a bit hamstrung, the sheer volume of activity these servers had and the participation from the really strong players made IL-2 Great Battles the most important place to be in sim gaming. I cannot overstate how active these servers were during peak COVID. Finnish server was almost permanently 84 out of 84, and my buddies and I would be spamming to try to join, and so was everyone else. You would get into a fight, and you would already know who you were fighting just based on how they turned or what plane they were flying. On top of that, there were entire squads dedicated toward pushing the front and it really felt like an online war was raging at all hours of the day. A real dynamic campaign and people were dedicating some serious free time toward this. Keep in mind, this was all happening while there were some long and aggravating issues in the game, but people played through it. We all collectively came together and made it viable because of the server admins of Finnish and Combat Box and the sheer number of players and activity. This was making such a splash that in my boredom of lockdown, I went back to Combat Flight Sims and even launched his YouTube channel. It was the place to be and it made IL-2 Great Battles shine as the definitive place to have a PvP experience in a Combat Flight Sim. What Finnish and Combat Box were doing honestly put the DCS multiplayer scene to shame. It was simply just a more sophisticated scene in IL-2. While people get really hung up wanting to be elevator operators, clicking their buttons in DCS, what you had in IL-2 was completely different. You had working front lines, a robust stat system that tallies the performance of players, squads, and individual airframes with different subvariants, rolling maps with different plane sets, and all that happening with great performance, and all populated by competent players. I have said this many times before, but if I had to pick one server to play on for the rest of my days, I would have always said finish your combat box, because it was the closest thing we had to a complete package. There was a tremendous amount of momentum here, and then all of a sudden, it stopped. IO2 Great Battles feels dead now. What happened? I point to a few key things. In July 2022, Battle of Normandy released approximately seven months later than when we were all expecting it to come out. Put it simply, this release was just a bit too little and too late. The first thing is the actual content. This pack is coming off the heels of Battle of Bodenplatte, and if you compare what is in Battle of Normandy versus what the game already had, 
you get the feeling that we were starting to retrace the same line again. The Mosquito was really the only new plane that kind of added a new experience instead of just another sub-variant. I guess you could say the Arado was something new, but this thing is so limited in multiplayer that it doesn't even really exist outside of being a novelty. Along with that, the Normandy map, while a very pretty map, is really limited in what sort of scenarios you can power. After all, you can only fight over the same channel for so long before it gets boring. Along with Normandy was the actual patches, and the very ironic thing about this all is the changes were all really good. Visual dynamic damage models were neat, custom numbering of your aircraft, and the long-awaited 50 cal fixes were all solid changes that made the game better. To make it super clear, the game clearly got better from the high moment during COVID to now. The issue is that it's coming right after two long years of COVID, and people have done it all in aisle two. All of the content has been consumed, and with no new planes like Heavy Bombers, which would add new experiences, and with no engine updates to give the game more scale, we're just retracing the same line over and over again. It's interesting because IL-2 Great Battles and DCS, in my book, have the same problem in some ways, but from two different angles, but it just feels so much worse in IL-2. While DCS has an edge in terms of fidelity and modeling, it totally pales in comparison to IL-2 in terms of having core things in place that make the game enjoyable. IL-2 has a good campaign system. The AI is believable, the game runs well in multiplayer, and it has a thematic plane set that is coherent and it doesn't fragment the community with paywalls like they do in DCS. The thing though that DCS has that IL-2 Great Battles doesn't is flexibility in mission building. The DCS mission editor doesn't get enough praise as it should. It really is powerful and allows for scripting. The IL-2 Great Battles mission editor is a nightmare to use and it's extremely limited. So while the DCS core game is very poor, it has a powerful mission editor that allows for new missions to be made and it has the hype train fully working for it. We have visibility into what is coming and there is a general expectation that things are coming in DCS. Meanwhile, in IL-2, the game is already really good but limited and we have no visibility to what is to come. In October 2022, Jason Williams, the executive producer for the IL-2 Great Battles series, announced his departure from the project. Under his stewardship, IL-2 Great Battles went from an obscure project and he grew it over time with multiple Great Battle packs and became the new standard for World War II flight simming. His departure was a big deal. What would happen? A month or two after that, on this very channel, I had an interview with the IL-2 dev team. We got some teases on what is to come and then nothing. It has been nearly a year since that interview and there hasn't been an update of what the new project will be. Will it be another great new battle? Will it be a completely new game? We have no clue. And the silence is suffocating. Month after month since that non-announcement, activity in IL-2 Great Battles has dried up. The main subreddit is slowing down. The Steam chart numbers are down and the activity on the multiplayer servers is down as well. The Finnish Evans were nice enough to share their player count for the last year and we see that the player count has really dropped off. We need visibility into what is to come. We need a reason to believe. I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I want to dedicate my time towards something that has potential to keep going. While I truly believe that the old games like IL-2 1946 offer more variety and scale versus both DCS and IL-2 Great Battles, that game is just too old for it to be an everyday thing because too many players get hung up on graphics. IL-2 Great Battles making a non-announcement and never confirming what is to come has sucked the wind out of my sails for this game. I love IL-2. I still think that pound for pound, Great Battles probably strikes the best balance for a modern combat flight sim. It's just without a clear road of where this is going to go and activity drying up, it's becoming a risk to sink time into. We need to know where we are going. So what do we do? We wait. The way I think about this is being at the horse races. You sit back and you watch the horses run and you have your bet on the horse that you think will win. Will the new IL-2 project not be a new great battle, but a whole new game? A new engine that offers scale that is maybe reminiscent of IL-2 1946? That would be exciting. Or will it instead go the route of fidelity and be like DCS? Who knows? What about DCS? They are a horse in this race also, in competition for our time. Will they start to focus more on the core game? As more time goes on, this non-announcement problem will hit DCS as well. 
If some visibility is not given to their dynamic campaign system, the multiplayer support, and other core gameplay components, I would imagine that people are going to get bored, just like they did with IL-2 Great Battles. This has been an incredibly sleepy year for Combat Flight Sims. DCS has been treading water for a bit now, and as far as I can tell, interest in the game is down. The multiplayer numbers are weaker across the board. Or will there be a Dark Horse on the horizon? We do have a potential usurper, Jason Williams. The former executive producer of the IL-2 Great Battles project is now making a new game, and it is called Combat Pilot. This one is an interesting one. The studio is the same one as Gates of Hell Osfront, and that game is incredible. Interestingly enough, that dev team seems to be huge IL-2 1946 fans. Out of all of the news about Combat Pilot, the most interesting nugget hasn't come up in interviews. It has come up in their Discord. One of their team members confirmed that the SEOW or CO system is coming to that game. If you don't know CO, think BMS campaign on steroids. It's one of the most comprehensive PvP multiplayer dynamic campaigns that you can have, and that is what the 1946 community anchored around for years. This concept alone makes this franchise into a serious contender for your time. One wonders what horse will come out in front in the time to come. I can't predict the future, so I am not sure how things will play out. In general, the point of this video is to say something that I think a lot of us are feeling and to give visibility to this. I love IL-2 Great Battles and I love the time that I shared with a lot of you during peak COVID on finished virtual pilots and combat box. It was a special moment and it is just wild to me that out of all the different things that could happen, I did not expect IL-2 to, to sort of die off a death of suffocation because literally nothing has happened. It's not like it imploded because of a bad patch or something. It's just nothing happened. Let me know where you're at with IL-2 Great Battles. What are you feeling? Are you sitting and waiting for the announcement? What are you hoping to get out of it? Additionally, how many of you are shifting your bets from DCS and IL-2 over to Combat Pilot? Or are you sticking with the, with the current two? I think it's a really exciting project and the one that I'm most excited for. I hope this video gave you something to think about. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing. On average, only 39% of viewers are subscribed and subscribing really does help the channel. Thanks and have a good one. Thank you.